Today we're going to learn about the artist Piet Mondrian. Piet Mondrian was an artist. He was born in the country of the Netherlands. Piet Mondrian became famous for using the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and three primary non-colors, white, gray, and black, in his artwork. He uses a repetition over and over again of geometric shapes and straight lines. Let's see if you can look for that in some of his artwork today. This is a picture of Piet Mondrian in his Amsterdam studio where he created much of his artwork. Piet Mondrian was born on March 7, 1872. He decided to become a professional artist and as he grew up he also had the influence of his father and mother who were headmasters of the Dutch Reformed Elementary School where he lived and also were amateur hobbyists and artists. Mondrian began teaching drawing in elementary schools in 1889 and in 1892 he began teaching in middle schools and high schools. After many years of teaching he became interested in painting landscapes and when he became uh, 31 years old he won an award called the Wilnick Van Collen Prize of Art with a still life. Mondrian spent most of this period of his life creating those still lifes and landscape artworks. Here's an example of one of his landscapes with trees. It is actually in black and white. Mondrian only used charcoal to draw this picture. Again, remember he worked with a very limited color palette. As he progressed into his art career, he became influenced by Pablo Picasso and the Cubism movement, where Picasso was using square shapes to break down objects and people into interesting designs. Mondrian began moving from those landscapes, as you saw before, to abstract compositions like this that were influenced with the Cubism. He also calls this trees, if you can believe that after looking at the first picture. Again, it's all done only in black, white, and gray. This is another painting of his. As you can see, there are some values of blue, some values of yellow, and some really light values of red that almost look pink in this painting he created. This is called the flowering apple tree. Again, it is very abstract, and we can see a lot of geometric shapes in the picture. For example, here is a rectangle, and we see lots of ovals creating the leaves in the tree. Mondrian was a fan of keeping things simple, so he used a lot of simple lines that were either just straight or curved, and simple directions, either horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. And again, those geometric shapes of squares, ovals, rectangles, and sometimes circles. Here is another painting of his titled Composition 1916. As you can see, it uses a value of red, pink, and it looks like he mixed the yellow and the red together to get a, a yellow orange color. And then he has the blues and the grays. Again, we see very geometric shapes and lines. His lines are very straight and the shapes that he uses are squares and rectangles. This painting was done a few years later, and he calls this one Composition Color Paints with Gray Contour. As you can see, again, he uses the geometric shapes of squares and rectangles. His lines are very straight and bold with the black paint. And then, of course, the colors, again, he uses are very limited with the gray, the white, and then he uses um, 
a very light shade of red. You could almost call it dark pink and blue and yellow. This is a painting called Composition with Red, Yellow, and Blue, and it was painted about five years after the last one we just looked at. Now you can see Mondoran is experimenting with darker value colors. Again, the shapes stay the same, squares and rectangles. His lines are getting thicker and bolder though in his artwork if you notice the way the lines look compared to the last few paintings we have seen. This is probably the second most famous painting of Mondoran. It is called Composition with Red, Yellow, and Blue, although the yellow is hiding somewhere in the picture. Can you find it? In this painting, this is definitely the style that has become known worldwide as the Mondoran style. What shapes do we see? What kind of lines did he use? This is probably Mondoran's most famous painting of all. It's called Broadway Boogie Woogie. It was inspired after Mondoran moved to New York City. And he was using, again, a lot of the same um, style and skills that he used in his previous paintings. What shapes do you notice in this painting? What colors do you notice? How does this look the same as the other paintings he painted? How does this look different? I hope you enjoyed learning about Mr. Mondoran, and we are now going to create some artwork inspired by his style. I hope you enjoyed learning about Piet Mondoran. I like his artwork because it's very simple with the simple shapes and the primary colors. But at the same time, it's also very bold the way that he uses lines to create all the different squares and rectangles. We're going to use a ruler today and our Sharpie to create those bold lines on our paper. And then you'll get to use your crayons to color in your picture. Now a ruler, as you might know from math in your classroom, is used to measure. You can see all kinds of numbers and they usually go up to 12 inches. Or if we're using the other side... 30 centimeters. We're not going to worry about the numbers so much today because we aren't really measuring anything to cut out. Instead, we're going to use the rulers to help us create a straight line while drawing. So what I would like for you to do is just somewhere on your paper, it does not matter, we're going to make three horizontal lines with our ruler and our sharpie. So don't forget on your sharpie you want to go ahead and put the cap on the end so you don't lose it. So you could have a couple of lines close together, you could have them all spaced out, wherever you want them to be, you can do that now. Now you wanna take your other hand and hold your ruler still as you draw your line. I'm not doing that because I want you to be able to see my black line on my paper as I'm drawing. And my other hand kind of gets in the way. And if you want, I think on this line, I'm gonna make it a little thicker. So after I've drawn my straight line, I'm just gonna kind of go over it with my Sharpie to make it a little thicker. We did see some thick lines like this in Mondoran's artwork that he created. You don't have to make it thick if you don't want to. Now that's our first horizontal line. I think I'm gonna keep the next line pretty close to this one. So I'm just gonna move it down just a little bit. Again, you put it where you want it to be on your paper. You are being the artist right now. I'm just showing you how to do something. Now, 
And then <clears throat> I'm gonna scoot all the way down here towards the bottom, I think, down the bottom of my paper. And draw my other horizontal line here. Now I'm gonna flip my ruler and we're gonna make some vertical lines. And we're gonna make two vertical lines on our paper, wherever you want, and that's gonna help divide up our um, paper here. And I'm actually going to do mine pretty close together, but you can space yours out further if you would like. Okay, and we are all done creating our grid. Our next step when we color, we're going to use those primary colors of red, blue, and yellow, if you remember, we talked about those last week. You're gonna fill in the different squares, but we're not gonna fill in all our squares because remember, Mondoran had some white squares in his artwork too, but we're gonna fill in our spaces now with our crayons, and you can just do it randomly, or if you want to do it in a certain order for the primary colors, you can do that too. And we're going to color now, and we're almost done with our project for today.